Hello everybody, this is UniWarrior GB and today I will show you how to create the ability to create blocks using Snowball. This only uses four command blocks and when I throw a snowball it creates a sponge. This is a special snowball, this is a normal snowball that doesn't do anything, uh, but this spawns sponges. And with that I have the ability to cross water, like uh, I have tried here. So I can simply throw where I want to go and create a safe path for me. Okay, and this is how you do it. So the first thing that we need to understand is how the snowball works. Now, in the introduction, I showed you that I had this very special snowball, that the normal snowball wasn't able to spawn a sponge. To give that unique tag to a snowball, um, you can add it to your gif command. So just like I did in a tutorial some time ago with the custom projectiles, you could give yourself um, a snowball like so, but you could give yourself a tag, um, yeah, right here, after the name. So there what you can do is you can add your own custom tags. So right now I can add a sponge ball, like so. The reason why I put a B behind it is because it's a boolean. I don't know it's necessary, but just to be sure I added a, a B. Okay, so that gives me an item uh, with that tag. If I wouldn't do this, let's say I would give myself a normal snowball, see how it doesn't stack with the one that I gave a tag. Now the cool thing about the snowball is that uh, when you throw it, it actually keeps its item data. So to get the data of something, you do slash data, get entity, add entity limit equals one, because you can only get the data of one entity, type equals snowball. There we go. Right now, I don't have any data. I am going to um, set my, where was it, jet settings, okay, there we go. I, I made my jet settings a bit larger, so you will be able to see. If I now throw this snowball, and you would execute that command, you would get a whole bunch of data. And here, under the section item, you can see we have our ID, Minecraft snowball, our count, our tag, and under tag, we have our custom tank, uh, SpongeBall. Okay, so now we have the ability to uh, identify our own custom snowball. S but, uh, in order to detect if a snowball has landed, we can't just simply uh, check certain things. Um, I have tried on ground. Now, on ground only works if the entity is actually on ground. So if I want to shoot a wall, for example, it wouldn't work. Plus, snowballs get killed before they even touch the ground. So this, this variable is useless. The other thing that we can do is we could uh, use um, these uh, coordinates. So this is um, relative to the facing orientation of the entity versus um, these ones. The problem is, is that the, snow, the snowball is um, not really an entity that has a, a solid orientation. This is kind of a random orientation. So we wouldn't be able to check what's in front of the snowball. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to spawn armor stands at the location of the snowball. So let's give ourselves a command block. There we go. So the first command that we're going to do is we're going to spawn a whole bunch of armor stands um, 
on the snowball. So let's do this here. So the first command that we're going to do is uh, execute at entity uh, as the at entity uh, type equals snowball and nbt this is where we fill in our uh, tag so the tag is under the item section tag and then sponge ball double point one b there we go at the executor so now we're executing at its position run summon uh, armor stand um, at its current position with the following tags um, this is to identify our uh, armor set I'm just gonna give it the same tag uh, invisible but for right now we're just gonna leave it visible and marker 1b Marker determines if it has collision or not. It will also turn off uh, gravity and so on and so forth. So if I put this on repeat and always active, we get this. So now we have armor stands on every location where the snowball has been. And we can create some very beautiful arcs with this. Now, the problem is, is that, of course, they don't have collision, so I can't just destroy them. So I'm going to have to do a kill at entity tank equals uh, sponge ball. There we go. So now that we have armor stands on every single position of the uh, where the snowball has been, um, we need to kill all the armor stands. So we only hopefully get the last one. So what we do, uh, we place a command block uh, after that. So in this command, um, we're gonna execute uh, as the uh, armor stand, which currently has a tag uh, sponge ball um, at its current location um, if entity so we only want to kill the armor stands that are near the the snowball so entity uh, at entity uh, again this is the uh, snowball that we're trying to describe so it's snowball uh, with the NBT um, item tag uh, sponge ball 1b and then all the way on the end yeah run kill at s so again we executing to all the armor stands with the tag if the entity uh, sponge ball is near uh, I do have to uh, put distance in here, distance of, let's say, um, less than two blocks, also counting in speed and so on. Um, so if there is an entity, a snowball entity nearby within two blocks, then kill yourself. Uh, that sounds very wrong, but there we go. So now we're killing all the armor stands um, and hopefully we get an armor stand on the last position. But as we can see, um, all our armor stands are killed and there is nothing left behind. So this is where the order is very important. Imagine we change the order a little bit. So this will become the loop one, uh, the one that kills the armor stands and this the one that spawns them becomes uh, later. So everything happens in one tick. So what we want is we want an armor stand to still be alive at the end of the tick. 
So hopefully when the snowball is killed, that that armor stand doesn't see the snowball anymore. So let's try that one. And there we go. Because the snowball is now killed before the armor stand is killed, we are uh, we have one armor stand uh, left behind. So now we can, you know, do anything um, with that armor stand. Uh, let me first kill these. There we go. So you know, let's let's spawn a sponge. I'm gonna remove these commands first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the command right here, and we're gonna you know spawn the sponge ball. So execute execute uh, as the uh, armor stand with the, the uh, tank equals sponge ball um, at the executor. Um, run set block sponge. There we go. Need to change this into a chain and all is active. And then, so now we want to kill the armor stand. So execute as the entity uh, tank equals sponge ball um, run kill at s and again this is a chain and all these active so now there we go the armor stand is killed and the sponge is left behind so now what we can do is we can uh, make this invisible And we can create our sponges. So now I can throw a sponge in there and remove all the water. There we go. But we are not done yet. Um, as I will show you, there is a little bit of a problem. Let's put this back to zero. Okay. Now, the problem, uh, it doesn't show always, but um, there is a, a potential that uh, your snowball will not work if you spam this. So if they land at the same time, they actually kill themselves. Now to fix that um, we're gonna add a little bit of an objective. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do scoreboard objectives and um, spawned sponge um, dummy uh, let's do a display as well spawned sponge why not? Okay so now we created a new objective. So what we can do with that is we can go ahead uh, and before we run the set block, we can do store success score at s uh, spawn sponge. Uh, let's see if I do, yes, okay execute as the entity so the at s should work so store the success of this command in uh, its variable spawn sponge um, so for example if i now turn this off for a second and i would do scoreboard objective set display sidebar spawn sponge For some reason, that's zero. Ah, okay. So it actually becomes one very quickly and then it becomes zero. 
So hopefully what we can do is before we uh, kill it, we can kill uh, the one that successfully spawned Sponge. So for that we can do scores. Spawned Sponge equals one dot dot. This is one or more. Um, okay, let's see if it still works. There we go. It still works. And now we can turn them invisible again. There we go. So now I think if I spam this, it will be less of a problem. Now, this doesn't have to be sponge. We can use other uh, things. Like, for example, instead of setting the block, we could do a summon um, TNT and its current location, like so. So now we have explosive snowballs. Cool. And we could also, instead of TNT, we could use a lightning bolt. Let's try to hit the B. Ooh, nice hit. So, um, I'm gonna set this back to uh, set block sponge, just to uh, show you one more thing. Uh, set block. Uh, wait, yeah. Uh, Sponge. There we go. So the cool thing about um, the fact that the armor stands don't have gravity is that I can, you know, hit walls with this. I can even hit ceilings with this I, if I can find a little ceiling, like so. There we go. So we're not checking if it hit the ground. We're just checking if it died. Um, so that will be it. I will put the commands in the comment section. Um, but uh, for the last part of this video, I'm gonna put this in a data pack. And uh, the data pack will also be in the uh, downloadable in the description. But I will go through a quick tutorial to make a data pack out of this. Okay, so let's try to put this in a data pack instead of having these commands running. So to make a data pack out of this, we only have four commands, so this would be easy. We go to options, go to resource packs, and then you open pack folder. You go one back to .minecraft, and then you go to your saves files, and then you go to the world uh, that you're currently playing in. Currently I'm playing in Spongebob tutorial. Um, we go to data packs and in here you want to create your custom data pack. So for me this will be sponge ball or let's do sponge ball pack. Okay, when we go in here we need a few things. First we're gonna have our uh, folder with data in there and we're gonna need our uh, pack.meta. I have a pack.mcmeta .mc with me and then we just copy that over. Um, in this, it's just a, a notepad um, with a pack, pack format, six description. Um, this could be a different description. Sponge, ball, pack, doesn't matter. Um, you can put a better description in there. Um, then, once we're done, we need a few more things. Let's go to data. Uh, once we're in uh, the data, we can make a new one. Let's have sponge balls. This is where all our custom stuff goes in. Here we write another folder functions. In the hint here, uh, we can write our 
uh, custom functions. So let's do new text document uh, init. Let's do init sponge ball. This is where we will put our uh, scoreboard thing. So our scoreboard, okay, I don't have it anymore, but uh, scoreboard uh, objectives and uh, I think it was sponge, uh, spawn sponge, spawn sponge, dummy, spawn sponge. Okay, I'm gonna select this, execute it. Okay, Optif already exists. Uh, we can open this up, put this here. We don't need the slash, and there we go. Then for the remaining functions, we can create another one. Uh, sponge ball uh, main. And uh, then we will put MC function. Um, yeah, uh, maybe it's important to say, but make sure that in view, your file name extensions are on so that you could see uh, the TXT on the end. And you have to replace the TXT with MC function. Then open spongeball uh, main.mc function. And then we're gonna paste our commands in there. So the um, killing one, um, the spawning one, there we go. Also make sure that your slashes are removed. The um, the other kill one and the 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 spawn one all right the reason why i have this on you will see in a minute is some debugging that i'm doing um so once this is all saved um you can go back to Minecraft and we can press reload. Then we can look in here um, to see if everything is reloaded. It looks like it is. Sometimes it will say like, couldn't find pack meta or it gives like a bunch of errors. But when it doesn't do that, then you know uh, your data pack is successfully uh, loaded in. You can also check that by going into function and here we have our different functions. But we want our uh, Inits to be loaded when our pack is loaded in and we want our uh, Our chain of commands to be constantly running. So to do that we're gonna have to uh, set up our Minecraft uh, functions so therefore we're gonna have to go one back or actually a few back uh, back to data and in here uh, you want to add a folder called minecraft all right uh, in the folder minecraft we create another folder tags and in tags we create another folder functions in here uh, we're gonna need a few files. Well, only two. Um, the first one is the load, but instead of MC function, we write JSON. All right, in here. Okay, so in your load.json, uh, you can put this text. And in here, you can put in um, your uh, values. So between these two symbols, you're gonna put in, uh, I think it's sponge ball, and then your function, which is init sponge ball, 
there we go I hope that works um, save and then uh, for the the other one uh, we're gonna make a new text document again tick dot json and in here we write the same thing but um, here we will write sponge ball uh, sponge ball main there we go so let's see if that does something slash reload and now I'm gonna go in here couldn't load function tag minecraft.tick as it is missing the following from spongebob pack okay so it's apparently missing some references did I not type it in correctly function spongebob main let's just copy this ah okay Sp for some reason I wrote an S in there um, perfect video with debugging um, so let's now reload again minecraft.load it is missing uh, the inits it's probably the same problem yeah okay let's save that reload Let's look at this again. Doesn't seem any errors anymore. Okay. To to check if it's really loading in, what you can do is in the uh, init now. You could say um, say um, sponge ball pack loaded in. Okay. Let's see. Reload. Spongebob pack loaded in. Perfect. Okay, let's see if we destroy these commands. Yes, we still have the same thing. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's how you uh, make a Spongebob, how you make a data pack of it. And one other thing, uh, the reason that I made a snowball, that is uh, that has this custom tag is not only to identify it easily but also that maybe later I can add a crafting recipe to it which takes in snow and sponge maybe and then I could give the player this very specific sponge ball so I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys uh, in another video bye bye <laughs>